Kate. I'm Avon. And I'm Sonia. And today we're dishing with you from Sushi Walk, which is located at 1900 Clarendon Boulevard, wait for it, in Arlington, Virginia. They always I know. Wow. me for this, but we have <laughs> left DC. We're in Arlington, and you should too. That's right. There's uh, plenty of sushi that we have out here. There would be more, but I have already eaten it. You think I'm joking? <laughs> I'm serious. No, she's this not. Is, this is about, you know, your su it's rock and roll, because you can come here and get your sushi roll. Rock and roll. Oh. I was going to get a tattoo later. I don't know. Oh, That's okay. what I was going to do. But if you come in, you get to hear your great <laughs> tunes, um, you have your, you know, your normal sushi and edamame, and lots of other fun kind of rock-inspired uh, menu items. And our guest today is Don Patron. He is a portrait artist, a portraiture, is that? Portraiture. Oh, portraiture. I feel like oh, really I'm very artsy. I, I, didn't, I did not know that. that. Yes, I am. So tell us about what, you, what art you create. Uh, I usually base most of my paintings on social issues or charities around Washington, D.C. Uh, how I pick my shows is I download the State of the Union address every year, and then I highlight social issues that the President speaks of, and then I look for them by person in Washington, D.C., and then I associate a charity to it. So That's a really interesting wow. way to do it. How did you come up with that? I was always the kid that when I started out painting, I sold my first painting at seven, but for whatever reason, politics and art were very nature-oriented to me. They seemed to always link up, which most artists really would not consider like them married. I, I have never separated them. Uh, when I was a little kid, if Ronald Reagan said, you know, every American needs to step up and donate money to American causes by USA, I broke my piggy bank and sent money in. Like, I was that influenced Aww. by politics. Did you grow Washington up in Washington? Washington? I did not grow up in Washington. Uh, though my mother is from Washington and my dad's Manhattan, I grew up mostly in Pennsylvania at a private school. In between. Which is, that makes in sense. In between. Right? I was a dangerous hybrid. I was a farm boy who went to the city on weekends. So, but that's sort of how I came up with it. I mean, I was always an artist and I was always very fascinated by politics. And I wouldn't roll out one day me running for so office. Yeah. Who bought that first painting when you were seven years old? And what uh, did you I not don't. buy it? No, it was a doctor. And actually, when the principal announced, it was a, an art contest for the whole school. And I had my grandfather fill out my application, and they thought it was 17, not 7. And so when I won, I actually thought I was in trouble. And my art, my teacher at the time was just like, look, I need this, you need to go on stage <laughs> and prove that you're some kind of prodigy because you're one of mine. And so she walked me up to the stage, I went up on stage, and the doctor that was in charge of judging the contest bought it, and the rest was history. I had my first collection by 12. Wow, wow. what was that piece, of, the first piece you sold, what was it? Or uh, I, was, it? I was seven years old, and it was an environmentalist piece of all things, and I don't think, I grew up in like really beautiful farm area, country area, so po pollution to me was an abstract idea to be honest, but I painted a painting called um, Roundhouse's Square Sun, and it was all different shades of blue with a bright red sky, and I just, I had read a Time magazine where there was heavy concerns about pollution in cities, and so for whatever reason at seven years old, um, something as simple as Time magazines would catch my attention, and so if they said it was an issue, my grandparents would make me talk about whatever I read, and I would talk about this. And so my grandfather's like, well, you should probably just draw it. And I did, and I entered wow. it into a contest and won. Which is like something that we hear about now, you know, the sort of art therapy and getting kids to sort of understand themselves through art. But you really we have been doing that your entire career. It was an instinct. It really was. And you, you said that the reason that you're an artist is because of a particular... Okay, I'm going to say this wrong, but Sinus... Synesthesia. Synesthesia. I am, I am diagnosed it? with synesthesia, what uh, is that? which would make me a synesthete. Um, uh, there's a very popular doctor here in Washington, of all places, where it's been pretty much culminated. His name is Dr. Kittowick. He wrote in the 70s a book called The Boy Who Tasted Shakes. Oh, I uh, know all about this. Oh, yeah. that's how I knew it. I, this You've is heard of it before. so interesting. Share. Synesthesia is when you're born with two senses hybrid together. So, whether you know it or not, I'm very good at conditioning myself into being quote unquote normal. But earlier, when we were getting ready for filming, the music was really loud. My hearing and eyesight are fused together. So when you talk, I see your voices. When there's music playing really loud, I can literally watch it. Um, so to me, something like painting your portrait, I can mix my paints very fast and paint very quickly exactly how you look because I'll know if it sounds right. 
So I know, like, okay, so and so's face sounds like this, or so and so's eyes are this color because I know that's what it sounds like. So I can paint a lot faster than most. And artists. does that also mean that you're able to incorporate somebody's personality so much better um, into their portrait? Maybe uh, not so much their personality, but definitely sort of like a characteristic. I, I think I also have an extra memory key because of it. Like if people hear a song and they know exactly when they heard it and that year that they loved it, well, for me, I hear people as much as see them. So it's like an extra memory key. I don't know how else to describe it. it, it it's almost like my doctor said, if you look at a sun and then look away and you still have like a color in your eyes, that's how I see normally. So I really don't know how other people see, but I show it to the best of my ability through my artwork. So when so were you diagnosed with this? I was diagnosed at four. Okay. With this, but did you know what it was at seven when you first drew your first piece? Or did you first no, piece? I mean, I knew I was different, but not because of a label, but because of how I reacted to things. Um, music boxes were color boxes and color boxes were music boxes. That's what I told my doctor when I was a kid because I would walk up to people with a Crayola box and open it because I thought they could hear everything that I heard. And when people wouldn't react and thought I was like this little autistic kid, they were like, okay, you know, they would just sort of stare at me. And at the same time, I would wind up my grandmother's music boxes from Italy and sit on a bed and stare because I thought that that's what everybody would do. And I didn't understand why people didn't find it beautiful the way I did. So when people would wind up a music box and then walk around and listen to it, I didn't understand why they weren't watching it. You know, so that's noticeably how different it was. And they consider it genetic. Um, my grandmother definitely was a great pianist because of it. My mother was a great ballet dancer because of it. And I just ended up becoming a portrait artist. Where can we experience some of your art? Where, where can we go out and see it? Well, I mean, most of it, I mean, I have an online site, of course, donpatronarts.com, which explains synesthesia as well as shows a lot of my art. But if you really want to see it in person, just hit a major charity in DC, whether it be the Knockout Ball or Fashion for Paws or any of the other various ones like Children's Law Center. I always do collections based on social issues. And I really try to tell a story as honestly and as beautifully as possible, whether it be homeless people or such. So um, to a really great way to see shows of mine is not by going to galleries, not by going to gallery openings. Um, though I do participate in those, I don't feel like they're the best venue to show my humanitarian side or my true passion, which is to highlight social issues. It's to hit the major charities, buy a ticket, and go see a collection. Do you take commissions for personal portraits if any of our, our viewers really want to see how you hear their face? I of course do. I of course do. Um, I love doing private commissions. I find them very interesting. But even with private commissions, I sort of get to know people, and then I put the collection, the story into that painting. Like, So if you say, you, I had a woman recently who was like, I love French poetry, I, love, I collect buttons, and I love my mom and dad's old letters. So what I did is her portrait with all of that combined, the entire frame matting is all old buttons. Uh, there's a French poem by Rimbaud upside down going through the whole thing. And then her mom and dad's love letters are part of her portrait. Oh, wow. So I really, it's the same thing as the charities. I try to flip the identity into a very personal portrait of the person. I would think that it would take a little bit longer for you because you have to get to know the person, but in the, in the on the flip side, you said earlier that you it takes you you actually you paint faster because you combine two little senses together. This is true. Um, I think that's an accurate assessment. I could walk away right now and paint all three of you like that. I would be scared. But it would I, be a loud painting, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, a you sugar could, high You painting. could walk away and paint all of us, but we could sit here for another eight minutes and we still wouldn't know everything we want to know about you. Thank you, Don, so much for being on Thank with us. Thank you so much for having we me. We have really enjoyed it. We hope you have enjoyed it, learning a little bit more about Don Patron and his artwork. You can find him all over town, charitable events, and check out his website, donpatronarts.com. Thank you. Thanks for watching us here on this episode of The District Dish.